G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. This week's video is about setting up an all steel fence, end assemblies included, with just the use of hand tools. So stick around, we'll go through the products, we'll go through the whole assembly. If you like this video, please don't forget, hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and check out timthompson.ag for extended content, blogs, video playlists, and more. So before we install any fence posts at all, I'm running in a ground wire between the two existing fences to give me an exactly straight line to put all of my post and fixings on. Always plan out your end posts and intermediates and run some sort of ground wire first to give you an idea of a straight line. It makes fencing much easier. In this case, the fence was going between two existing fences, so I could use the intermediate posts on those other fences for tying off my ground wire. I only tie off at the far end. At the close end, where I'm straining up, I actually don't cut the ground wire. That means I can just roll it up again when I'm finished and I don't waste wire. Okay, so now that we've got our ground wire laid out and we're underway, let's have a look at the gear that we're going to be using for today's fence. I'm using, at each end, a Fence Stay FS2000 kit. Now, this is a much larger Fence Stay. I have reviewed them in the past. If you want to check out that detailed review, click on the little tab at the top now. But today, I'm using their larger model, which actually has a 76mm down tube, and it's just under 2.2 metres long, so it's going to go in the ground a fair way. We're going to be using a petrol post rammer to install this today, so that should be a lot of fun. You can hire them and makes the job really, really easy. We're going to be attaching to that some white stiff stay, 15 centimetre picket spacing wire, and that has the high tensile top and bottom line wires, which helps avoid the need for save wires top and bottom. I'm going to be hanging gates off both ends of the fence, and for that, I'm making my life easy with the fence stay gate hanging kit. A shifter and 10 minutes and you got your gates hung. So that's the gear we're using. Now let's go and have a look at laying out the fence and then I'll show you that really nifty trip for wrapping your end assemblies and keeping them stock safe. Staying with the galvanised steel theme, I've decided to use XL stock posts from Watts for the intermediates on this fence. This will be a super strong choice. As you can see on the left, the XL post is a far larger steel post when compared to the standard size stock post on the right. Next up, I measure the driving length on the fence stay post so I don't put it too deep into the ground. Notice I'm using an old gate for my distance. I'm putting up a 10 foot gate and you should always leave about 50 mil spare for your fixings and your fittings. This next bit gets loud. Now you could probably drive these fence stay posts single handedly, but having a mate around to help you is really useful. They're a 2.2 metre high post. We're using a petrol picket driver to put these posts in. And although that does mean that you don't need any specialised tools or equipment to get them in, I still would suggest considering getting them driven. It's sort of pushing this machine to the limits of its performance. One tip is to actually sharpen the fish mouth on the end of the post that you're going to drive into the ground with an angle grinder and this will make it go in the ground a lot easier. We're also stopping quite frequently as we start the drive just to use a level on the post in two directions at 90 degrees to each other to make sure we get the, the post exactly level. It is important with this system that you get the post straight up and down in the ground and you don't have it going off at an angle. Once the end post is set into the ground, setting up the stay post is super easy and doesn't require any measurement. You just use your top rail and slide the post down through the down tubing and you've immediately got your post not only set up for the right measurement, but held up out of the ground for you, making driving the second post certainly a one man job. As I'll now demonstrate by gracefully entering the back of the ute, which is serving as my mobile work platform. Once again though, big tip with this system is make sure that you check your levels at least a couple of times as you start driving, because you want your top bar to be able to slide easily up and down your posts even when you've rammed them in the ground. Just take that extra two minutes.
The beauty of this system is that once your two posts are in the ground, all you have to do is slide your top bar back off, use the pre-drilled holes to bolt it together with the crossbar, and do your nuts up finger tight. It's now ready to make your end assembly complete. Pro tip, just leave them finger tight because you want a little bit of movement so that you can easily get your assembly down the posts, tighten them up when it's installed. For the next step, you need to be about eight foot tall. And they go on reasonably easily. A little bit of jiggling, but you get the drift. Once you're finished, you throw a few self-tapping screws in just to stop the assembly from sliding on itself. These screws don't really bear any weight. They're just there to make sure that your end assembly doesn't get out of whack during your remaining fence install. By the time we got down the other end, we had a real rhythm up and the speed of install by the time we were doing the second assembly really sped up. With the end posts done, it was time to run out the intermediates at a 4 metre spacing and then whack them in with the petrol post driver as well. Another great advantage of the choice for using galvanised XL posts is that they come pre-marked for you, so getting the depth right and having all your posts even along your fence is super easy. Okay, so we're about to start running out our fabricated wire down the row. I've made sure that the section of wire that was tied off is at the back so it's going to roll out nice and flat on the ground. I've also made sure that the smaller holes are at the bottom pointing towards the fence and the larger holes are away from the fence so when we stand it up your fabricated wire doesn't end up upside down. You'd be surprised how many times that happens to people. The next thing we want to do is obviously make sure we're wearing safety glasses because we are cutting open something that was tied under tension and because I'm doing a pocket strain on the ends I'm actually starting the run out of the wire about two meters past the end post and you'll see why in a minute. Let's cut her open and let's start running it out. going past the end assembly because we want to wrap it remember that so what I'm doing here is I'm enveloping the whole end assembly in the end of the wire I've come all the way along the fence line gone around the end post and come back to the stay post and I'm tying off behind the stay post now I can only do this with the steel posts because they're nice and slippery so fence stays are perfect for this method I wouldn't recommend this method with wooden posts because you'd get a very uneven tension on your line wire but what we're basically going to do now is just tie end knots all the way down our stay post keeping the line wires and the picket wires nice and straight and then we're going to go down to the other end and I'll show you how we strain it up using an envelope strain. Now another advantage of this envelope method, do you hate tying the bottom knot? Well, with the envelope, you can lift it up the post, tie off your bottom knot, and then drop it back down again. How good is that? We're finally up out of the dirt. I'm not going to lie to you though, it's still a pain tying them off. Just a little bit easier. 
And that is not going anywhere. Now I've got my two strainer plates set up, opposing each other. This strainer plate is attached to the main fence. This strainer plate here is attached to the wire that I've enveloped the end assembly with. Now I'm gonna crank the two opposing strainer plates together and the wire is gonna wrap itself around the end post. And I have slack wire here that's ready for me to tie off and envelop the end assembly. That way, horses and other animals like that can't go and get jammed in the end assembly and hurt themselves. The beautiful thing about enveloping your end assembly is that now you've got some lovely loose wire that you can play with, bring it around here, tie it off to your line wire and everything stays under tension. You don't need any expensive or fancy joiners. It's not a bad method. Now we've got it all strained up and tied off around the post. I can let the strainers off, take off the plates, clip the fence up, and it's quitting time. Next time you're running out prefabricated wire around steel posts, try the envelope method. It makes the job a lot quicker. The fence is starting to come together now with the white Ballamore gate and the fence stay end assemblies looking like the perfect match. All there is to do now is fasten the stiff stay to the intermediate posts with these nifty little clips. Well there you go, a nice, tight, strong, all steel fence. That's it for this week guys, don't forget if you like the video hit the subscribe button down there, give it a thumbs up and check out extra content if you can't wait around for another video on timthompson.ag. There is hours and hours of stuff there. Thanks heaps to the sponsors and I'll see you next time. Right?